Good day everybody, and welcome to another Final Fantasy XIV guide. As we leave Heaven's Word behind, I figure now would be a good time to take a few steps back and go over the process of obtaining the Anima Relic in more detail. With Stormblood right around the corner, having better equipment will also leave us sharpened for the upcoming content. So today, join me as we begin our saga for the Anima Weapons. To get started, you must have completed the main scenario quest, Heaven's Ward. To confirm this, simply check to see if you have unlocked the Aetherochemical Research Facility and the Singularity Reactor. In addition, make sure you're all caught up in the quests for the job you will be making the Relic for, all the way up to level 60. And lastly, I would strongly recommend unlocking all dungeons from patch 2.4 and forward, as well as all the hard mode trials and the Crystal Tower series, as they all play critical roles throughout the questline. Once all the requirements have been met, you may pick up the starting quest, An Unexpected Proposal, from Rowena in Idleshire. The animated step marks the beginning of our new adventure. Firstly, the quest Soul Without Life will have you travel to Mordona and speak to the NPC Sindany. She will task you with obtaining two nodules, one Astral and one Umbral. There are two ways to go about doing this. The first is to collect one Luminous Crystal from completing fates in each Heaven's Ward zone, and turning them in for their respective nodules. Alternatively, you may submit a level 50 Zodiac Zeta weapon of your choice, effectively skipping this quest, but keep in mind that the weapon will be destroyed in the process. Once you have obtained both nodules, return to Adashir to receive your first animated weapon. In order to awaken its latent powers, Ardashir will ask that you revisit and complete 10 different dungeons spanning both A Realm Reborn and Heaven's Ward. Any level 50 dungeons may be completed unsynced, and you need only have your animated weapon equipped as you exit each dungeon. Once all 10 duties have been completed, speak to Ardashir once again to awaken your weapon. The following step will introduce us to our first grind stage proper. Here, you will be tasked with procuring 4 different weapon materials each obtained by collecting items from different sources. Firstly, let's talk about the unidentifiable items. Each one of them can be obtained in exchange for Tombstones of Lore or Tombstones of Poetics, as well as tokens from the Heaven's Ward Beast Tribes, the Vano Vanu, the Vath, and the Mughals. Additionally, tokens from the old Beast Tribes, the Amalja, the Sahagin, the Kobold, and the Sylph can also be exchanged for their associated item. Precision drops from the Alexander Gordia sector, the fist, the cuff, the arm, and the burden of the father can also be exchanged in a similar way. And lastly, certain unidentifiable items can be purchased with allied seals and are occasionally rewarded from doing level 60 treasure maps. The remaining items, known as the crafting tokens, can either be crafted by their respective jobs or purchased directly with Grand Company seals. Once you have obtained all four weapon materials, return to Adashir to be presented with the first form of your Anima weapon. To improve the conductivity of your new relic and to help communicate with the Anima, Ardashir will task you with procuring several bottles of either oil. These can be obtained in two different ways. The first is by completing the weekly Crystal Tower quest, The Gift of the Archmagus, from Ko Rabinta in Mordona. Secondly, Either oil can be purchased with a substantial amount of tombstones of lore, but I would recommend saving them for the next step, unless you happen to be sitting at or near the tombstone cap. Once you've collected all the necessary bottles of either oil, return to Adashir to have your anima enhanced to its hyperconductive form. In the reconditioned step, the quest A Dream Fulfilled will have us customize the stat allocation of our relic. For this purpose, the NPC Ulan will task us with procuring Umbrite and Crystal Sand to create Treated Crystal Sand, the necessary catalyst for the process. Umbrites can be purchased with Tombstones of Lore, and only Tombstones of Lore. You will need a significant amount of them for this step, so make sure you keep up with your daily roulettes and seek out first-time players for additional bonuses. Crystal Sand, on the other hand, can be obtained by offering several different items to Ulan. If you have a high level gatherer, I would strongly recommend exchanging them for blue scripts, especially since the addition of the new diadem. But if that's not an option, be sure to speak to Ulan and see what other items you can offer. 
Each pinch of treated crystal sand will increase the stat of your relic by 1, bringing the total amount needed to 240. In the game's current state, this would translate to anywhere between 60 to 80 Umbrite and Crystal Sand, depending on bonuses. One final thing to note is that after completing this step, you may return to Ulan and reallocate the stats if needed, but this time only at the cost of additional Crystal Sand. Once you're finished reconditioning your anima, you may return to Adashir for your next assignment. As we enter the Sharpen step, the quest Future Proof will have us sharpen our relic by collecting Singing Clusters. These can be primarily obtained by completing two new repeatable quests in Idleshire. Cut from a Different Cloth, a daily quest that rewards you with one Singing Cluster for completing the Expert Roulette, and Seeking Inspiration, a weekly quest that rewards you with 18 clusters for completing the Leveling Roulette three times. If you have a surplus of Tombstones of Lore, which I doubt, you may also purchase additional Singing Clusters from his Mina in Idleshire. Present all necessary Singing Clusters to Ardashir to have your Relic enhanced to its sharpened form. For the complete Anima step, you will be required to carry out two new separate quests. Born Again Anima will have us collecting Etheric Density from completing Heaven's War duties, similar to the old Light Farming of the Zodiac Relics. Currently, the preferred method of doing this is by speedrunning the Fist of the Father Savage, also known as A1 Savage. Make sure to use the provided Anima Glass to keep track of your Relic's Etheric levels. The quest will be marked as complete once all 10 glyphs shown have been fully activated. The second quest, Some Assembly Required, must also be completed by procuring new might. These can be purchased with Tombstones of Lore, Poetics, or Grand Company Seals. Complete both quests, return to Adashir, and get ready for the final Relic step. Just like the original Relic, the Luck step is our usual Victory Lab step. Here, the quest Best Friends Forever will have you revisit all level 50 and 60 hard mode trials. Take your shiny Relic for a spin across Yorzia, and once you're done, purchase a bottle of Archaic Enchanted Ink for the low low price of 1000 Tombstones of Lore or Poetics. Once all is said and done, return to Adashir one last time and you will be presented with your final, fully completed Anima Weapon. I hope you enjoyed going over the Anima Relic grind with me. As usual, you will find useful links and timestamps in the description of the video. And if you enjoyed this guide, make sure to leave a like, or maybe subscribe if you'd like to be notified when the next video comes out. But until then, this has been Grail, and I hope to see you next time.